Join me as I dive deep into the rising tensions in Russia and try to uncover what could lead to a civil war. Russia, a country with a rich and complex history, has been plagued by rising tensions in recent years. The historical context of Soviet-era repression and the nation's transformation into a modern-day federation have created a perfect storm of division, protest, and unrest. Political repression has been a significant factor in Russia's growing divisions. The Kremlin's tight grip on power has led to widespread frustration as citizens feel their voices are being silenced and their freedoms are being eroded. The government's response to peaceful protests has been brutal, with activists and demonstrators often facing arrest, imprisonment, and even violence. Economic struggles have also played a significant role in the country's growing unrest. Russia's economy has stagnated in recent years, leaving many citizens struggling to make ends meet. The nation's over-reliance on oil and gas exports has made it vulnerable to global economic fluctuations, and the government's inability to diversify the economy has led to widespread discontent. Public discontent has been simmering beneath the surface for years, but recent events have brought it to a boiling point. The government's handling of COVID-19, rampant corruption, and the perceived injustice of the political system have all contributed to a growing sense of frustration and anger among the population. Moreover, the government's reliance on propaganda and disinformation has further exacerbated the divide. State-controlled media outlets have been accused of spreading false information and promoting a pro-government agenda, which has led to a breakdown in trust between the government and the people. In response to these issues, different factions have emerged within Russia, each with their own motivations and agendas. Liberal Democrats, nationalists, and communists are just a few of the groups vying for power and influence, often with competing visions for the country's future. Pro-democracy activists have been at the forefront of the protests, demanding greater freedoms and an end to political repression. They see the government as illegitimate and corrupt, and believe that only radical change can bring about true democracy to Russia. On the other hand, nationalists have been pushing for a stronger, more authoritarian government, which they believe is necessary to restore Russia's greatness. They see the government as weak and ineffectual and believe that a firmer hand is needed to maintain order and stability. Communists, meanwhile, have been seeking a return to the Soviet-era system, which they believe was more equitable and just. They see the current government as a betrayal of the revolution, and believe that a return to socialism is the only way to restore Russia's former glory. Recent events have brought these tensions to a head, with protests and demonstrations erupting across the country. The government's response has been brutal, with riot police and security forces deployed to quell the unrest. One recent event that exemplifies the tension is the Navalny protests, which saw hundreds of thousands of Russians take to the streets to demand the release of opposition leader Alexei Navalny. The protests were met with violence and repression, with over 3,000 people arrested and many more injured. The government's crackdown on the protests has only added fuel to the fire, with many Russians now calling for greater autonomy and even independence for certain regions. The situation is precarious and it's unclear what the future holds for Russia. What do you think about the situation in Russia? Leave your thoughts in the comments below and be sure to check out our other video on the rise of nationalism in Eastern Europe. The intensification of the war between Russia and Ukraine in the Kursk region has sparked strong reactions among the local population. The Russian army's inability to counter the Ukrainian forces led both the population and local governments to express their discontent with the Kremlin, announcing the formation of their own armies for self-defense. In response to the advance of Ukrainian forces across the Russian border, the authorities in Kursk decided to create new volunteer battalions. 
On August 29, Interim Governor Alexei Smirnov announced the formation of the Bars Kursk Detachment, which will cooperate with the Russian Ministry of Defense in military operations and counterterrorism efforts, in addition to providing humanitarian aid to local residents. Each volunteer will sign a six-month contract and after completing a training course will receive a weapon. The recruitment for this battalion was announced on August 24. Vitaly Sarf, a representative of Ukrainian forces in Kharkiv, reported that Russia has also created the Bars Bryansk and Bars Belgorod battalions. This is seen positively by the Kremlin, as it helps avoid a second wave of mobilizations. Furthermore, the Kremlin prefers not to call upon the experienced soldiers from Donbass. On August 12, Putin declared that both the army and volunteers would be necessary to expel Ukrainian forces from Kursk, thus avoiding a general mobilization for the time being. In another significant incident on September 21st, Russia faced a tragedy when a Sarmat intercontinental nuclear missile dramatically exploded before being launched. The missile test, conducted at the Plesetsk spaceport, ended in failure, leaving a crater and causing substantial damage. Satellite analyses suggest that the explosion may have occurred during refueling or due to a liquid-fueled engine failure. Although there is no direct link to the U.S. reconnaissance aircraft Cobra Ball, the missile failure has had a significant impact on the Kremlin. Putin had ordered the Sarmat intercontinental missiles to enter combat service in 2022, but this incident has complicated those plans. The Sarmat missile, touted as a key component of Russia's strategic nuclear deterrent, was first successfully tested in April 2022. However, out of five tests, only one was successful on April 20th of that year. The longest flight of the Sarmat lasted just over two minutes and covered 35 kilometers before losing control and crashing. Since that test, Russia has faced challenges in developing this missile, and the recent explosion marks the fourth failed test, despite Kremlin claims that the Sarmat was already on combat alert. The Sarmat explosion occurred shortly after Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, a close ally of Putin, warned that Moscow's nuclear weapons were ready for total war. Lavrov stated that Russia was establishing red lines, although his comments seem more like threats than actual strategic positions, especially after the missile explosion. This highlighted that Russian nuclear forces were not as prepared as previously claimed. Recently, Vyacheslav Bodin, another close ally of Putin, warned that a nuclear war could erupt if the West allowed Ukraine to use long-range weapons to strike inside Russia. However, following the Sarmat's failure, Putin's and his officials' nuclear threats have lost some of their potency, and experts have pointed out that Russian nuclear weapons have a failure rate of 50%. Despite this high failure rate, Russia still possesses the world's largest nuclear arsenal, with around 5,600 nuclear warheads. Of these, 1,700 are ready to be launched, 2,300 are in storage, and 100 are being retired, but could be reactivated if necessary. Russia's nuclear weapons include bombs capable of destroying large cities, and about 1,000 tactical nuclear bombs for battlefield use. The maintenance of these weapons is crucial for their functionality. Key components, such as plutonium cores, must be replaced every 10 to 15 years, and tritium, which enhances nuclear efficiency, degrades every 12 and a half years. However, Russia has struggled to maintain its arsenal due to high costs, corruption within the military, and financial issues stemming from the war in Ukraine. Nuclear maintenance does not appear to be a priority for the Kremlin, which may explain why the Sarmat missile failed so spectacularly. Corruption also plays a significant role in the decline of Russia's nuclear program. The misappropriation of funds, sale of armor, and overall mismanagement have plagued the Russian armed forces for years. If this level of corruption extends to their nuclear program, Russia may be in worse shape than previously thought. Even if the nuclear bombs themselves are functional, the launch systems, such as missiles and bombers, could fail. The Sarmat missile's explosion before launch is a reflection of this structural decay within the Russian military. That's all for now. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Instagram, where there's new content every day and many surprises coming soon. Don't miss them. Without further ado, I wish you an excellent day.